Uh, for those who don't know, Pearly Things is a cool, cool white content creator. Um, she was born in the States, but then is now based over the pond over in London, and she makes some relationship style videos in this type of um, style format that she makes. A majority of the people that are employed by her and have the conversation are black people, in particular a lot of Africans, because they migrated over to where she uh, where she lives. The, the reason why all this is important is because it seems like she's making a pivot in her content, being more political based and ideology based, regardless if it's right or left. And her first guest that she decides to bring on was Nick Fuentes. Oh, I'm not racist. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are, Nick. Yeah, I am a little bit yeah, racist, but listen, but it's not because I hate people. I what do we talk? I ain't gonna lie. What are we talking about? Here? I love people. It's just <clears throat> race is real. Maybe some brajol. <laughs> there, there's some Italian. No, for but you. I will make my uh, <laughs> black boyfriend some of that. Ugh, wow. You're disgusting. You don't know any better. She had him you don't know any better? Podcast. Whoa. It was very clear that she was unaware of the conversation that was being had. She was not properly informed, something that she openly admitted as well. Everything that happens in life, as I say to the girls on my show, is my own fault. The fact that people are making these videos is my own fault. And the situation that I'm in is my own fault. Now, I'm going to give you guys an explanation and give you guys context for some of the conversations that were had. Just know it's not an excuse. It's my own fault. I take full accountability for everything that I'm happened. Confused, and while doing so, um, said a bunch of things that were very problematic. The first thing she brought up was um, immigration, right? They were talking about immigration, right. Nick Fuentes being a purist. He believes that the border should be locked down. Nobody should be able to come in. But how it pearly things, she believes, no, it needs to be opened up. It needs to be more broad and, uh, and more and more um, robust in terms of allowing more people to come in. So much so that she used the phrase that she wants to bring her Africans over to America. She wants to bring all her Africans or just some? All are African. Got it. Um, and during this conversation, we were talking about immigration. And I said, uh, I'm trying to get my Africans to America. Of course, uh, not the uh, greatest phrasing, right? Especially when you're dealing with somebody who was a known process. Uh, another comment that she made about was uh, uh, CP time. You know, what people don't know. That is color people time. It's an ongoing joke amongst black people who are always late. <laughs> I took you. I'm on my way because I thought I was already 10 minutes late <laughs> when I was leaving. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's so. okay. Blessing was more like uh, late African. <laughs> well, he's black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that black person right there? You see that African right there? My employee. They're always late too, man. Don't worry about it. And also at the end of the conversation, one of her other employees who also is Italian, Nick Fuentes is, is Italian um, apparently, and um, said that she denounced Nick Fuentes and all the Italians denounced her. And Nick Fuentes' response was, And um, the Italians, we do not claim you. Oh, oh, hey, the Italians don't claim you. You're the one dating a black guy. The Italians don't claim me. They don't claim you. Oh, no, they claim me. They claim me. <laughs> I don't think so. They do. Italian guys, yeah. Italian, Tell an Italian big, guy about lovers. your affinity for black guys. That'll go over real well. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Nick. I'm going to be as optimistic as possible and say that the this, reason bro? why there wasn't a pushback or any type of ongoing conversation with some of those comments is that, you know, maybe, you know, just tongue in cheek, maybe a couple of bad jokes here and there, you know. But the thing that really pushed it over the edge is that um, Pearl was uh, claiming that she agreed with Nick Fuentes that some of the things, some of the atrocities over um, human history are embellished to control the narrative. And for whatever reason, Pearly Things thought it was relatable to say that slavery in America was also embellished. This sounds, this sounds similar to the slavery stuff too, because that's that's literally they they the founder of or the guy who made Roots said I wanted a myth for my people to live by. So they often, but that's what they do is they embellish. And I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible. It was right, but they want to make it like more horrible so that they can control people. I just like, how do you embellish like the murder of mil like hundreds of thousands of millions of people, regardless of the tragedy? Like, how could you not talk about that enough? Like, if that's know. if that's in your history, like if you have ancestors that have been through that, talking about it, talking about how brutal it was. Yeah, I'm like, mad quiet right now because I'm crazy. just so rich from somebody who hasn't seen, who will never see that type of hardship in their life. Never. That's no. super rich. What's what's even crazier is that she said that and used a reference point that is like a blimp in in human history. She used 
she referenced the roots. And the roots, for those who don't know, that's um you, even yeah. if you never heard of it, you definitely understand some context. Um, um Puta Kente, that's where that character comes from, and the whole scene of like your name is Toby and all that's where that's from, right? At that series was shown on TV throughout the 70s or 80s, if I'm not mistaken. But it was shown on network TV in America. And trust me when I say, even though some of what was being told in there is a bit of a myth, because apparently it's supposed to be um some type of story depicted from you know somebody's lineage. However, the depiction of slavery in Roots is so far from embellishing what actually happened that you calling that em embellishment is a gross, and I do mean a very gross and irresponsible take on what Roots was, especially since there don't... literally cannot be anything that is shown on network TV that would even come close to giving an accurate depiction of what slavery actually was because you can't show that type of stuff on TV anyway. So the right. idea that was an embellishment when the reality is that most media around slavery in the States has been utterly whitewashed, has been toned down, has been suppressed in so many ways to come up with the take that it's been embellished when it's been the opposite opposite again very irresponsible same thing with Adam 22 where it seems like there's a bunch of white creators or people who are, are creators who infiltrate themselves in communities that they're not that familiar with that they do not know much about but they see the opportunity when it comes to Adam 22 it came it was hip hop mm -hmm. and to validate himself in that space he surrounded himself with a bunch of black people however he is so insensitive about the community and gave so little of a fuck about it when given the opportunity because he wanted to make the pivot he brought in an mm -hmm. old Rosses into to the studio, interviewed him, and then told his black and his black black and brown employees, his employees of color, hey, y'all don't don't worry about who I got around here. Y'all just need to edit and upload these videos, get these clips out. Let's get it going now. And the same thing with Pearl. You are so insensitive to what's actually going on that mm -hmm. you are participating in a conversation. This is that, quite wild. frankly, you do not believe. My fault. I'm mad quiet, bro. This is wild. In the space like I'm the listening manosphere. because. All right, hold on. Let me do a quick take. I'm listening because yo, this is what this is gross. This is mad crazy. Like this is mad crazy. I don't know this this pearls girl. I seen her a couple times on TikTok. A Adam twenty two. They been on his body, bro. What on his T O P? All of the uh, as far as like all of the uh, guys I used to watch that used to be there, African American brothers. Most of them gone. That's crazy though that he said that. Um. The dude that was sitting next to Pearl, Pearly or whatever her name is, he I seen him a couple times too before. He was wild. I did not know he was on there wilding like this though. That's crazy. That's well, sick, bro. Relationships dealing with black people. You he but that's how she really feel though. Black people, regardless if it's African Americans or Africans or someone mm -hmm. with some t form of descent through um Africa, you surrounded yourself around those people to validate yourself, put yourself in conversation that you do not belong in, and when it's time to make the pivot, because the money drying up, because there's so many times you can get off. I, I found that my parents' relationship is easier because they've only dated each other and they've only had kids with each other. There's so many times <laughs> that you can get off. Um, if you're a virgin on your wedding night, you have an 80% chance of a happy marriage, but it drops to a 25% chance after like five to seven partners. So you're basically ruined after like five to seven. Y'all don't know no better, man. Y'all, y'all, all, you say you a 10, you a 10. Huh, y'all not 10. Well, how, how, what's your dress size? How tall are you? So many times you can get that off. Now it's time to make the pivot. And you gave so, you give so little of a fuck about the people that you surrounded yourself yeah, with, who street. helped you build the platform, who you participate in the community <laughs> with, that when Excuse you got me. the opportunity to bring on some more content, potentially, your real color showed and you brought in somebody who's a racist but didn't surround yourself with the people those same people that you've been surrounding yourself with the entire time none of them were a part of the dialogue none of them were part of the conversation you didn't inform yourself to actually give pushback when it comes to those black women though you real quick with the you quick with those comebacks but when it came to Nick Fuentes for whatever reason you thought it was acceptable for you to sit down with somebody and be and be ill-informed about that even though that conversation is much more serious and much more severe than the fucking quirky oh man what do you look for in a man but you still sat down and once it was all done you said all right let's get this going chop this up send this out edit it thumbnail yeah, title it make sure it. we get it live and you were telling i don't, I don't know how she snapped you not understand how fucking crazy that sounds right now like, i think it's not even like as much of a black issue surprisingly i think it's more of like a wanted to succeed by any means issue because for sure she's seen other people getting the same problem for having the same guy on their their fucking network not knowing what they're talking about letting him get his talking points off yeah. and having nothing to rebut, rebut him with yeah. 
Yeah. Literally, we talked about it a fucking week ago, but even before that, I seen him in conversations with people just on regular live streams as well. I don't hear from this nigga when he's by himself. Niggas is deciding to give him a platform. If you're gonna give him a platform, at least have a conversation worth having. Don't go in there uninformed. So I think it's just like when you're incentivized to want to say and do extreme things all the time, yeah. those are the type of guests you're gonna want. Because you're not even thinking about like having a productive conversation as much as you want. You know he's gonna say something wild, you know you're gonna have a headline, and you're probably not gonna be the one catching the flag for it. That nigga is. So, but when people see it in the back, I'm gonna be like, oh look, there's a podcast over here. Enough times, people are gonna start tuning into your podcast because they start seeing it everywhere. So it's actually uh -huh. in her interest. She is fully incentivized to want to bring people on that are egregious like him, have takes uh, that are very extreme because but, it's gonna give her content, the, the content to work yeah. with. That's gonna but be a still, can get off on YouTube. That's gonna be the I'm every more you, content and more. And we never really did that. Respect with our it. We didn't even really look for people well, back when we, we did, did the opposite. Picture. We just we're, like if no, you had no, a good we, story, we respected but, it. But, but we uh, had somebody on the pod who was saying very extreme things. The gentleman. Oh, we never uploaded. And we never uploaded it. Yeah, I remember that. And so you there is a level of responsibility that you should have as a content creator, especially when you're having conversations to that level of severity. But and I agree with you. It is a lot of someone just seeing the opportunity and pivoting. What I'm saying mm -hmm. what's what's still happening and I think is crazy is that I think that there are people who are being propped up in the in black communities because if we keep an eye on to ourselves, the ongoing dialogue with the man of fear and this this ongoing traditional woman, the, the, the conversation that we've been having for the last year and a half now, almost two really, has been Let's keep it a bean on social media has been popping because of black creators. Not saying there aren't other creators doing it, but the ones who have made it popular the most are black creators. And I think Pearly Things saw an opportunity, infiltrated in the conversation to validate herself in that convo, surrounding herself with a bunch of black people. The reason why I say it is because when you listen to her talk, even about the relationship shit, bro, she just says things, bro. It sounds like she's pandering to people. She sounds like, as they call it, a pick me. It doesn't sound like she has any actual um, intellectual thoughts, nothing really contextualized. It just sounds like she's regurgitating the same talking points that she's heard from someone else, and she just wants to be even more extreme about it. I.e., oh, say it. I don't think women should vote. No. Huh? I don't think women should vote. Lord Jesus, keep on going. <laughs> because there's freedom without responsibility. I believe in consequences for your decision. So the men know if they vote someone batshit crazy into power, you guys get drafted. We don't. <laughs> you know, come on. Come on. That's a fucking incredible quote. Come on. Women, but, women shouldn't vote because they don't want to have the responsibility of going to war. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's a, such a crazy take to have. I think social media incentivizes people to want to be yeah. more, more, more. We talked yes. about that with Logan. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. I, I can't watch this. Man, shout out to Playback, but <laughs> Shorty is moving wicked, bro. This is this is wild. Shit. I'm just letting him talk because I'm just taking it back. I did not know. People, yo, I be seeing what they talking about on social media when they be saying stuff like, yeah, certain people just should not have a podcast. Yas. Some of y'all folks be bugging, bro. Just egregious. Wild misinformed. Just wild brainless. Like, just on BT, bro. So, y'all be safe out here, man. Man, let me know if I should make a podcast, man. I think my podcast would be lit. I just need... I got a couple homies I know it's going to be mad funny if I get them on a podcast. But word, man. Let me know what y'all think about this. Shorty is... Yeah. She is a character. Unsavory character at that, though. Show. Sure.